Hello and welcome. This is the first video in a hopefully long series where we go over tips, tricks, what works, what's broken. Thank you all for joining and hope you enjoy the video. All right. Um, so I'm going to start with uh, some some simple things. So the crafting system. A lot of videos have been made where you know you can see people are dragging things around. And then you also have the ability to extrude with the control key, so that's kind of the basics for at least extruding. But also the grid you see is, is kind of helpful for just wherever you're looking is where it's going to snap to. So you can actually just hold the button down, adjust your camera, and it'll lock to those planes. So if I stretch it out, and I decide I want to go this way, it stays in place. But if I go this way again, it'll actually snap back to where it started on that grid. Another super useful thing is uh, just, you know, the ability to undo everything or redo everything. Control Z and Control Y. So you can double click. That's a nice little feature to select all the things you've double clicked on. Do it with the frames. You can also do it with the points. And move multiple points around, which is quite helpful. So if I grab these four plates here. Oops, I want to redo that actually. Let's grab this, this. Drag these and it'll move all at once. So that's a pretty useful way to kind of get, get your just adjusting larger shapes. You can also drag things that are already attached so it's quick to move them around. And if I move, say I grab this edge over here, if I move this, it moves everything attached to it automatically as well. Oops, I keep hitting enter by mistake. Useful feature here. So if I want to delete this bot, I can actually just look at it and hit backspace and that'll actually delete whatever you're looking at. Another slightly more advanced trick, which is not quite written down yet, is you can actually change the size of this grid by hitting the numpads. Since technically the grid doesn't need to be there, so one, two, three, four, five changes the snapping settings. So if I grab the curve now, I can give it smaller adjustments. So you notice as I switch the grid sizes, it, it changes where things snap to as well. So like a two size grid is not going to be aligned with the three and five size grids. So that's something to keep in mind if you're changing grid sizes. So you can delete things by hitting the delete key. You can use the radial menu and hit delete there. Or you can hold right click. So we have multiple ways that, that you can actually delete things you've added. And now since I'm not sure where these points are lining up, again, I like to do just, I like to place reference points. So I'll build like a, I guess, spoke out from the middle, just so I have a point to compare with all of them. I'll often leave reference points lying around because I find it makes life a lot easier in the long run. So let's see here. So another th trick for those uh, the early players, if you if something's not working on one side of the mirror, you can try then repeating the same action on the opposite side, and sometimes that does work around some of the bugs we're working through. Another cool feature, actually. So let's say I have a another shape I've started over here. If I merge this point together, it'll automatically snap the curve together to match. There we go. So. If I want to close the shape completely, I can now just do this, extrude this, move this on top, and it'll automatically snap again.
there we go. So now I have, it's not a, it's not a perfect circle because I could have spent way more time and someone with those uh, illustrator skills will probably do a much better job than I at this. But just to give you an idea, you can do it. And then if you want, you can also delete the frames to make it uh, have a smoother surface appearance. So now if I spawn this, it has, it, it has like the appearance of a flat surface. Right, so instead of building a standard suspension, I think I'm going to make a slightly more complicated version. I think I'm going to bring down some support and build my own. I seem to have made that slightly crooked. There we go. Perfect. Much better. Another thing to remember is if you're extruding away from something, you'll notice it'll actually take the top plate away unless it's on an, uh, an attachment of some sort. So if I put just an attachment here and a chassis, the only time it doesn't get rid of the face is if it's the, the root. So going like this, we'll leave the back face. And something else to remember with attachment points is that your starting shape, it will try and center itself right now. So if I bring this out, it'll try and center itself on this object. So you'll see sometimes where if I, if I suddenly merge something, it'll flip around because the triangles get a little bit confused when it loses the number, so it does odd things. So one of the things I would suggest doing if you're working with uh, an attachment point is to actually just work off of the attachment point. And then you can always just delete the edges to make it look the way you want it to look. So, so now I'm leaving this one face as it was. And then this gives you a, a lot more control. Which brings us to our next trick. What if I want to make this a servo now. So if, if I just select this object and open the catalog, I, I can actually switch this for a servo. Let's see if it's just a preview. So yeah, that, that unfortunately wasn't quite very happy, but we can fix it. Let's see, let's grab this one and see what happened here. No, I want this one. There we go. Okay, I see. So it actually attached to the same side. So in this case, I'm just going to delete this and add a new one. Sometimes this works the, the other way around a little bit easier. So if I do that shape again. And say I want to replace this with a just a static attachment. That worked much better that time around. Alright, I'm just gonna try switching it to a servo again real quick just to see if it's happier now. There we go. Now it's happy. So having it go out in both in in more than one direction gives the, the game a little bit more help when it goes, hey, is that what you're trying to do? So it sees something in front, and then it just sets it up correctly. You can also spin that around with the mouse wheel. So I'm just going to put this on the side for later. Something else you can do is you can just pull things off and set it aside so that you can reattach it later. So if I know later I'm going to be using the wheels uh, or motors, I can just, you know, just place a motor out in space and then I can middle mouse button click it so I can add it later. Just try and save time when you're building if you know you're going to be using a bunch of pieces. You can also lock the frames. So if I lock this, now the frame acts as a single piece. So, you know, you can take it and move it around a lot easier and you won't accidentally click on it when and work on the pieces. Go in 
here. So there's also a properties menu. So I can see exactly what number things are rotated at. If you click on things like pistons and servos and motors, you get like this helpful UI. You have the direction that it's traveling in. So on this side, it's minus one. On this side, it's plus one. And then in the middle here, you have a starting angle. So you, you can adjust where, where it actually starts. So if I put this up a little bit and then I should, it should have mirrored automatically. Yep. So, so now it's going to kind of show me that it's starting at this angle. So if I spawn this, those have actually gone up to their default position. And if I want to use it as suspension now, I can also go into the properties again and I can just set the motor strength down some. So now if I, let's see here, if I put just a regular motor on this, And uh, slap a big old wheel on that. There we go. Actually, I probably have to drop that down a little bit. Should go the other direction. And if I make this frame super heavy by making it steel, so that's another thing you can do. You can edit kind of multiple parts. If you double click, it selects everything. You can go into the properties and you can actually change the material type, which will affect kind of the weight and endurance of the of the build. So now it's all steel. And so you can see that it's actually bending. We also added a transparency toggle so because this one was a bit more difficult. You can actually also hold spacebar uh, to just hide everything. So as I hover over things, it'll actually highlight and move the camera around to show you. So right now, if I if I hit this button, the input node will return either plus one or minus one. So one of the things I'm going to want to do is uh, is make the jets not as strong because I just want to slightly lift to show the the suspension. So you have a few options for doing this. You can tweak the power over here of the motor, or an alternative is in the programming. If you just do a bit of math, so if I grab the multiply and constant here and say, you're going to be smaller. Now the input is only going to go from 0.2 to minus 0.2. So if I do a debug wave here, so this is how the debug feature works. If you, if you have an input coming in, you can tell it to toggle on and off. And then you can actually see the results of what exactly is happening with your code. So it's kind of a trying to preview and just give a better idea of the flow, but in a nice visual way. This is part of the advanced, uh, when you hit this advanced mode, you get that uh, wave output. So then the jet's only gonna get min max of those values. And thank you so much for watching part one. If you like it, let us know, join our Discord community and add us on the wish list for Steam. Thank you and goodbye.